salah. What is that? Well, if you must know. One mic. Uh huh. Produced by All Star. For you. My whole life I've been looking for the right one I can swear that I never was gonna find one And then you came around Hello, I'm not Sarah And I'm Aaliyah and we're taking over Poppin' Presenting our perspective on Philly Youth News We're gonna be adding flavor to this episode Highlighting important facts about foods in our neighborhood <laughs> Yeah, Aaron and Earl were sold The last Poppin' episode I watched I saw two T-Rex fighting in the background And one of them birds in the sky I see you stop it. We were given this opportunity to follow in their footsteps, yet make it our own with four new cast members of Poppin'. Oh. Silence on the set. <laughs> you wanna, you make it feel good. You're biting off more than you can chew. That's corny. <laughs> no. This is corny. <laughs> Do you know that there are 77.4 calories in one ear sweet corn? Something to think about, right? Well, don't laugh, but what are calories? Energy. Oh, like energy drinks. Well, let's find out. Brenda, and today we have David and Jack. And I'm gonna ask them a few questions about food and stereotypes. So, do you like energy drinks? Yes, I do. Like Especially Gatorade. Gatorade. Mm -hmm. What do you like about Gatorade? Tastes good. <laughs> I've had a couple. Uh, they taste decently. I don't know how they affect me though. I'm doing so much in the day that I need energy, and you know I drink a lot of energy drinks. A lot of energy drinks? Yeah. Like, what type of energy drinks do you like? Uh, usually Red Bull or Amp. That's really the only two I drink. So, why do you like them? Um, it gives me a little added boost on my day. I don't really drink coffee, so that's the only alternative I have to get energy. As far as like Gatorades and Powerades, well, other than that, I don't drink any other type of energy drinks. I still go water. Do you know what's in energy drinks? I do not. I'd be lying if I said I did. I do not know what's in it. Uh, sugar, electrolytes, 
spirit, like gives me strength to go on. That's what Gatorade is about. A lot of people take it, you know, during study periods, finals times. But I only had it, I think, once or twice, and this was before uh, attract me like competition. It's kind of like the way certain brands promote their drink. It make you actually believe it. So whether it works or not, like I actually believe it works. So that's good enough for me. Energy drinks are designed to use carbohydrates to make energy. The average energy drink has about 200 calories, and energy drinks like Monster and Red Bull use artificial sweeteners which are 600 times sweeter than regular sugar. Two to 3,000 calories a day are enough to fuel the body. Often people consume too many carbs and they turn into fat, which makes you sleepy. In turn, people grab Monsters or Red Bulls to wake themselves up. What most people don't know is drinking an energy drink is only immediate energy. It's like eating candy. It leaves you hyper and then it drains you again. And the carbs become fat, which makes you sluggish and tired. Kind of defeats the purpose of an energy drink. In addition, excess carbs could also cause gastrointestinal problems. And it could also reduce coordination and balance. People's body react differently based on the brand of the energy drink. Nasir, are you eating again? Sorry, did you want Do you know how many calories are in there? No, but I'm sure you're going to tell me anyway. There are 220 calories in two Tasty Cakes. Only, Only 65, 65 calories in an apple. And 393 calories in just one cheesecake. So this is not fair. On the latest, it was popping, and we're here at West Philadelphia University for High City High School, where we're gonna look at and take a look at what the uh, students and participants are doing. Rick was started back in the 90s. Um, it started as like um, a group of people coming over from like um, all, all com coming over from like all over the country, and um, it's um, it's ran by youth. So it was just like one idea that started off like and it became something big. So every day we're kind of like empowering the idea of um, young people involved in urban agriculture and in creating differences in their food systems. Rick, which stands for Rooted in Community is a national grassroots network that empowers young people to take leadership in their own community. One way Rick fosters healthy communities is by allowing youth the opportunity to work on urban farms. Can you tell me exactly what you are doing? Um, right now we are currently making uh, seed bombs. This is for the vacant lots around the area because a lot of we West Philly sadly has a lot of vacant lots, like nothing in it, and it's just like probably dead grass or even just dirt. Like you look around the neighborhood and you see like all these lots and everything. Like you can make a lot of you know, you can do a lot of stuff with these lots. Like we what you see right over here. Yeah. Like what we do with this. We we sell this at uh, farmers market over on. Uh, over at Clark Park, you ever yeah. been there? We sell that, we sell it real cheap so it's affordable for everybody. You know, we want everybody to you know, basically start eating healthy. We're part of a food justice movement and Rick is all about community. So just get together with your community, hold like community potlucks and just tell people about what we're doing here. We come out here in the mornings, we do chores in the garden, that could be anything from picking up trash that's gotten um, scattered around overnight to weeding mint that will be used in our water or in chocolates that are um, sold locally. Um, and so, and all of this is done by youth. We hold big fundraisers with food and, you know, try to get it back in the community. Um, we go door to door and do canvassing, you know, um, when we go out and things like that. So I would promote Rick in that way. Quick question, I noticed you mentioned something about canvassing. Well, would you be able to elaborate on that? Um, when we go door to door, um, we do, uh, you know, we hand out flyers or we have a very, we have a mobile market um, where we have painted like 
big, uh, big thing on the side that has to do with, um, you know, community gardens and things like that and trying to promote, you know, food safety and things like that. So we push it out there. I mean, we go in that so people know as soon as they see it, they know. So, d d does that taste good? What, this? Yes. Yeah. It does? How about you? Do you like it? Do you like eating fruit? Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's so yummy. It's so yummy? Awesome. Is that good? Yep. Where did you get them? Off the tree. Off the tree? So, you guys were growing a tree? Yes. Yeah. Was, it, was it hard? Yeah. Well, thank you. That is good. Mm. That's what's popping. All right, I just left Rick here at the University City High School. And here we learned about sea bombs. We also learned about canvassing. And we had some fresh organic fruit. And it was right off the tray. So that's what's popping. This year, youth leaders from all over the country, California, Michigan, Maine, and North Carolina gathered in Philadelphia for the annual Rooting and Community Conference. In this conference, the youth wrote the first ever Youth Food Bill of Rights. So Justin, what is everyone doing today? What is this that's going on behind us? Well, um, yesterday we made like a, um, a bill of rights for food, youth and food, and uh, we're just telling the people about it right now. Hi, I'm Daniel from Philadelphia, PA. We demand more farmers markets instead of supermarkets. The number of farmers markets must be increased every year until there are more farmers markets than supermarkets. Yeah, I think if uh, there were more urban farms and community gardens, it would promote jobs if, if there were people who organized to have youth programs or just programs that would employ youth. Youth can get stipends, first of all, to learn the skills, and then secondly, maybe they're going to start working at the farmer's market and the retail part of it, right? Actually doing sales. So they're practicing that, they're getting age, and they actually are selling food and getting revenue from that. If we make uh, more community gardens and more farms and more uh, organic Food, food sources, it'll make, open up a lot of jobs for people. Has it opened up any opportunities for you? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, where I work at, it was made because of a garden that was started a long time ago. So that helped me out because uh, I have never had a job before until this. I do think that urban farming will promote jobs because that's what everybody here has been doing. Um, I think it gives youth um, the job opportunity and it also educates the youth. Can you tell me what's going on right now? Uh, right now, what's going on, we are at the Convention Center uh, here in Philadelphia presenting the Youth Food Bill of Rights that was brought about through Dignity Dialogues and Discussion on July 29, 2011. So, what do you feel like you're doing for the future by being a part of this group today? Future? I just hope, like, people can eat, like, more healthier in the future. Like, I don't, I see all the obesity rates and I see, I heard that, like, kids are dying before they parents because of, like, obesity rates. So I just want to see, like, the future a bit more healthier than it is now. So uh, I heard y'all signed the um, Food Bill of Rights yesterday. Can you tell me what happened? Yeah, the Food Bill of Rights is basically a list of 19 ideals that we have and uh, things that we want to change about the food system. But if you want, you can go to youthfoodbillofrights.com and you can electronically sign that petition. And hopefully if we get enough signatures, we can present it to uh, Congress or, you know, other lawmakers and hopefully something will, will come out of that directly. We the youth want more healthy foods in our schools and all schools all over the world. All people must respect and protect the land that grows our food. We demand an end to the mistreatment of workers, farmers, animals, and the environment that's caused by our current food system. People have the right to know what's in their food and to decide what to eat. We need healthier school lunches that are implemented by schools. Call for the termination of any and all genetically modified seed, plants, and produce. And GMOs. No, no exception. exception. We the youth positively don't want any chemicals or pesticides in our food. We the youth demand a ban on high fructose corn syrup and other additives and preservatives. That means that six apples are equivalent to just one cheese stick. Nasir, are you listening to me? Yeah, well, no. But at Rick, I interviewed some youth who talked about, uh, at University City High, who talked about planting some organic fruits and uh, selling them to their community. Well, I can see it's having a positive effect on you. Yes. Your fruit salad looks tasty and healthy. It sure is. What am I supposed only supposed to eat fried chicken? 
I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stereotype you. It's cool. Brendan's already investigated some food stereotypes in Breaking, Breaking it, it Down. down. The following edition of Breaking It Down has been created using materials from a media literacy workshop developed by youth of the Urban Nutrition Initiative. I'm Lindsay Grave, and I'm Breaking It Down. You're not breaking it down, I'm Zareda. And I'm Brenda. And, and we're, we're breaking it down. Hey Zareda, did you have fried chicken and watermelon last night for dinner? Actually, no, I had Chinese food, and I'm pretty sure it was cat instead of chicken. Are you serious? Are you serious about fried chicken? Actually, none of us are serious. We just wanted to demonstrate some of the ugly food stereotypes that we're going to be breaking down today. Food stereotypes have followed different races and cultures around for centuries, but today we're going to discover the roots of some common food stereotypes, how they evolve over time, and how they can still be hurtful today. Everyone enjoys food. But how would you feel if food stereotypes interrupted you from enjoying your meals because of your ethnicity? Let's use Asian food stereotypes as an example since they were supposedly cats in Zareda's Chinese food. Did you ever think when you eat Chinese, it ain't pork or chicken but a fat Chinese? Yet the food tastes great so you don't complain, but that's not chicken in your chicken chow mein. Seems to me I ordered sweet and sour pork, but Garfield's on my fork. He's purring here on my book. There's a cat in the kettle of the picking room. The place that I eat every day at noon. They can feed your cat and you'll never know. Once they wrap it up in dough, boy. They fry it real crisp in dough. Asians have been made fun of about what they ate because of vicious rumors about eating cats and dogs throughout history and today. Let me break it down for you guys right now. Some of these stereotypes have truth to them, but let me explain to you why you might have heard that Asians eat what we consider to be our beloved pets. Back when Southeast Asian countries such as Vietnam, Cambodia, Philippines, and Thailand were at war, rural citizens struggled to maintain sufficient levels of protein in their diet. In America today, people are comfortable eating cows and chicken as regular part of their diet. However, in some Asian countries, cows were very expensive and viable as farm workers. Since animals like cats and dogs really didn't serve any useful purpose, they were eaten to supplement people's already meager meals. The people ate whatever they were able to get their hands on in times of trouble and some, but not all, continue to do so today. In our culture, domesticated pets are loved as family members, but in other parts of the world, this isn't always the case. And it's not necessarily as disturbing to them as it might be here, because they simply didn't grow up thinking about cats and dogs in the same way that we might. People who practice Hinduism, eating cow would be just as repulsive to them. Similarly, Muslims might find it unholy and disrespectful to eat any animal that is beneficial to mankind, such as pigs or horses. Even in our own country, people eat unusual meat, such as alligator or shark meat in Florida and Louisiana, or rabbits, turtles, snails, frogs, and other meats that might seem unusual, disgusting, or saddening depending on our perspective. Also, vegetarians and vegans are sometimes as offended by any and all meat consumption as a dog lover might be by some Asian cultures eating habits. Zareda, tell us about African American food stereotypes. Commercials, movies, and other forms of media perpetuate stereotypes that all black people eat is macaroni and cheese, fried chicken, watermelon, collard greens, and other so-called soul food. Need a tip when you're stuck in an awkward situation? Too easy. I've been eating chicken my entire life, but I had no idea that I was eating it because I was biologically predisposed to eating chicken because I'm a black person, an African American, you know, people that look like this. Turns out I was born this way. Wow. Some of these dishes have a history that goes back to the times of slavery in America. Black slaves were allowed to only eat the scraps of slave masters' meals or other undesirable food. Slaves created innovative recipes using some of the leftover parts of chicken or vegetables that weren't used by their masters. Collard greens were a bitter vegetable that slave owners didn't like the taste of. Given the abundance of this unwanted vegetable, slaves were able to use it and develop their own creative ways of preparing this food and many others with unusual ingredients and cooking tools such as skillets and fire pits. Today, these dishes are traditional foods in African American culture. Before the 1960s, this food was simply known as Southern style cooking. 
It was renamed Soul Food to honor African American traditional cuisines that helped them survive in the trying times. Many traditionally Southern foods, such as chicken or watermelon, then became related to African Americans in an unfortunately negative way, and thus became the stereotypes we know today. Wow, Zareta, that's so interesting to find out where those stereotypes originated from. Yeah, you hear lots of jokes about cats and Chinese food or blacks eating fried chicken, and sometimes they're funny to laugh about, but we need to understand where these ideas come from and why they might be harmful today. Seriously, people of all races like chicken and watermelon, and due to FDA regulations, we won't be finding any cats or dogs in Chinese American food. So before you make fun of what someone eats, think about why their culture might like eating that food and why it seems normal to them. Making jokes might seem okay, but sometimes it's not. It's, it's stereotyping. stereotyping. Tune in next time for more help with Breaking It Down. <laughs>I have to think twice before I eat Chinese food again. What if I'm allergic to MSG? Well, you will look like Will Smith's character in Hitch for a few days. It seems like Nasir didn't get it. So we're going to go into a little more detail. There are many differing views on monosodium glutamate. Many people enjoy MSG for sensory reasons. It makes sweet sweeter and salt saltier, giving anything with MSG a more savory taste. Why wouldn't you use MSG in everything? Everyone loves flavor, right? Well, MSG is used for more than just flavor. It's used as a preservative. You could call it salt replacement. It holds freshness in canned veggies and soups. So what's the big deal about MSG? MSG was tested first on rats before being sold in U.S. markets in 1947. The rats were given a small dosage of MSG every day. And as a result, the rat's first layer of their retina was killed, and certain areas of their brains were injured. Another issue with MSG is that many people don't realize how much of it they take in every day. MSG is not just in Chinese food. It's in some everyday food favorites like Doritos, cheese nibs, Oreos, Ritz, and beverage favorites like Dr. Pepper, Sprite, Pepsi, 7-Up, and even Diet Dr. Pepper. Are you a shopaholic? Do you look at your bag and say, I need more? Do you do this? Do you spend what your mama gave you? Then fraud it like you bought it yourself? Could this be a potential problem for you? Well, Poppin' has the answer. Hey, Nasir! Hey. Um, have you been influenced by something? Uh, yeah. Media, I suppose? Perhaps. Oh, uh, yeah, I see. Um, well, you should drink something. Like drink? Yeah, Poppin'! That would change your life. Poppin'. Poppin', an all-natural fruit drink. With no preservatives, just good stuff. Ain't it good? Yeah. It works, right? It would change your view on life. A daily dosage prescription and should be used before watching television or entering any advertisement based settings. Side effects may include increased knowledge and media literacy. What do you think the difference is between healthy food and unhealthy food? Well, healthy food provides nutrients, you know, and supplements, you know, the body. And unhealthy food, basically, it harms the body, body and causes obesity and fat and, you know, whatnot. When you hear healthy foods, What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Um, basically, the only two things I ever think of is probably about solids or fruits. Do you like eating those things? I eat a solid once in a while, and I just eat fruit every day. I like fruits. It's pretty good. Um, I think a healthy diet is essential to a healthy lifestyle. As many natural foods as you can, like try to stay away from a lot of like processed foods and stuff like that. You want to get like the natural nutrients and the natural vitamins from natural foods.
Like go to your neighborhood grocery store, get your fruits and vegetables. No more McDonald's. Like it's hey, all no fake fruit. Get some bananas <laughs> None of that. <laughs> yeah, bananas, grapes, vegetables, carrots. No Burger King, apple pies, none of that. Wow, all this talk about food is making me hungry. Not me, I've been eating all day. Well, that concludes our episode. But before we go, we want to give a big shout out to a local youth run business. Teams for good. Yeah, this vacation is awesome. Like, I don't get to do anything. I just like relax and spin stuff. Popping? Nah, I don't miss popping. Man, I was just thinking of how much I don't. Wait, 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 wait. Let me let me call you back. Hey, what's going on? This is Aaron with Poppin. And I'm here on at Whole Foods on whoa, Pennsylvania. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, Aaron. Aren't you supposed to be on vacation? Oh yeah, that's right. Here you have rest Alfred. Take it away. Well, my name is not Sarah. We're on Pennsylvania Avenue here at the Whole Foods. And we're gonna go in, interview some youth, and find out what Team for Good is. And we're actually gonna find out why youth should be concerned about eating healthy. So let's go check it out. I avoid the streets, I don't get in beef I just sit in the house and I knock off beats I don't get high up for smoke, I get high up for hope Test books is where it's at, I keep my head in the game Not in girls' laps, I do lots of things in my c community uh, Teens for Good is a youth-led food production business We grow our own food, we bring teens together from all over Philadelphia To come together to make food and sell it to start right A uh, couple local restaurants Teens for Good is just in the name. It's ran, it's run by teens, and what we do is we have seven different sites that are scattered around uh, Philadelphia. Can you tell me a little bit about healthy food and why you should be concerned about healthy food? Uh, I say healthy food is a very important thing to me, mainly because um, when I was younger, I always was like, oh, fast food here, fast food there, and uh, and it slowed me down a lot. But when I started doing sports and eating right, you know, I felt I felt a big difference. I mean, mm -hmm. I know. Like, you still can have health, uh, unhealthy food here and there. I read a lot on the news that, you know, somewhere out in the country, all they do is eat healthy food, and they live to around, like, around 130, 140. So wow. a healthy food goes far. Can you tell me about the, the kind of food and stuff that you guys grow? Um, sweet peppers, tomatoes, zucchini, squash, um, onions, garlic. Does it take long to grow that stuff? Um, yeah, it takes about a couple weeks to get started and then takes a couple more weeks. What are you guys' goal? Our goal is to make the city a better place by producing organic stuff and not just having bad stuff in the community. You're my love my best friend, my baby. Never see me wrong, even though you drive me crazy. That's right, my lady. Today was an awesome day. I was really inspired by the youth working hard at selling healthy produce. I'm really inspired by you. Like, how did you think to do it? Well, I mean, I learned about what Team for Good is, and I also learned why you should be concerned about eating healthy. Other than that, today was a popping day. Rotation, some gum. You see this? Mm. John crazy having a whole conversation. Boy trying bag. Right. Taste you like him? You think she like him? Yeah. Maybe yeah. she yeah. probably do. Yeah. Probably do. Yeah. Popping dumb moment. Excuse me. Can you guys have a question? Who looks better? Who looks better, honestly? You're gonna go take him over the guard. Whoa, look at that.
Thank you.